G7's answer to the Belt and Road Initiative? G7 leaders have announced a 600 billion US dollar global infrastructure program that aims to fund projects in developing countries. Called the Partnership for Global Infrastructure Invest and Investment, or PGII, the initiative is widely perceived as a rebranding of a similar short lived idea rolled out at last year's G7 summit under the name Build Back Better World. What, if anything, is different this time? How will G7 countries ensure the projects align with what developing countries really need? And where does it fit among other major infrastructure projects, such as the Belt and Road Initiative? Joining me today from Washington, D.C. is Surab Gupta, a senior Asia-Pacific International Relations Policy Specialist at the Institute of China-America Studies, and in Beijing, Zhao Hai, Director of International Political Studies at the National Institute for Global Strategy of the Chinese Academy. Academy of Social Sciences. Gentlemen, welcome to The Point. So uh, this sentence is really interesting. I'm going to go to Mr. Kupta first. Now, President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, says the program will provide an alternative or a choice for developing countries. Alternative to what? I don't think there is a need for an alternative or a choice. There is such a huge uh, financing gap in the in, in the international infrastructure space that the Belt and Road and the G7 projects are most welcome to participate and and enrich and 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 raise people out from out of poverty. Of course, what what she was talking about was competing with the Belt and Road, but the Belt and Road should be a partner and whatever money is put to infrastructure finance should be welcomed so that as long as it is not done in a zero-sum context. The White House says that the PGII will deliver game-changing projects to close the infrastructure gap, gap in developing countries, strengthen the global economy and supply chains, and advance U.S. national security. Zhao Hai, how do you understand these objectives, especially the last one about U.S. national security? Well, that's uh, exactly reveal the real purpose of the PJII at this point. Uh, like you pointed out, that at this time, there's a huge gap between the global supply and demand of infrastructure. If the G7 countries are indeed wanted to fill the gap and help developing countries, then their purpose and, and their activities should be working with China and other like-minded countries to improve and invest more into the infrastructure. However, they made it very clear the national security is very much the concern of this time of G7 countries and therefore competing with BRI on geopolitical and geoeconomic uh, uh, platforms would be more important than other uh, purpose of helping developing countries. So this is very self-contradicting. Self Let's take a look at the situation in the United States, Mr. Gupta. Um, we know the infrastructure inside the United States is quite troublesome itself, is quite outdated. How, do the American, how would the American voters and people look at the, this idea of spending lots of money overseas to help developing countries improve their infrastructure? Why at home you're having old airports, old bridges, no high-speed railway? That's exactly the point. Uh, yes, in, in November of last year, they did put, for, put through a bilateral infrastructure agreement through Congress, so kudos to that. But that gets exactly to the point. There is such a pressing need for infrastructure in this country, and it has not been done right. Why should we think that it can be, that it can be done right and that the funds will be available in the first place? And, you know, we saw that the same sort of mentality with COVID the talk of doing good, good things for, for, the, for the world. But when COVID really struck and the vaccines came out, it was all for the Americans and all for and a few for other Western countries. And the poor people never got their hand on, on any uh, workable vaccine from the West, uh, from the United States, I should say. And I think that same dilemma is going to crop up again in this, in this area of investment that the US is going to face. Now, the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs spokesperson Zhao Lijian responded, and uh, here's what he said on Monday. Let's take a listen. China always welcomes initiatives that promote global infrastructure. Such initiatives do not have to cancel each other out. What we oppose is moves to advance geopolitical calculation and smear the BRI in the name of promoting infrastructure development. 
Chahai, let me go to you. Let's imagine that this time this idea really lands and really gets materialized instead of dying like the previous one. Uh, what will happen on the ground for those developing countries? Will they be really benefit from the greater variety of choices or alternatives they might have? Well, uh, I certainly hope so. I certainly uh, think that it would be great for the de developing countries to have more choices, more options. However, it's not alternative picking one, meaning that you have to give up, give up another. Because China and other countries uh, like Turkey or other countries have uh, the power of developing uh, hard infrastructure like bridges, roads, you know, airports. Uh, and the developing, uh, developed countries have their advantages on more software leaning uh, kind of improvement on infrastructure. So cooperation is the best way forward. However, if the developing countries are asked to follow one standard or one rules and then disregard the other and then exclude other countries from the overall uh, infrastructure projects, then they will be uh, you know, in this very uh, self-conflicting way and uh, hard to choice to make the choice. So I think moving forward, if the developing countries, uh, I mean G7 countries insist on adopting their so-called high standard um, uh, infrastructure projects, then we'll have a problem. Why on earth do we have to have different projects? Why countries cannot cooperate, let's say? Wouldn't that be a much better idea, Zhao Hai? Once again, for instance, China already has a lot of uh, infrastructure projects in place, a lot of expertise, a lot of connections. And the Western countries, you know, if they're able to join hands with Chinese builders, wouldn't that be a much better idea and much, fe much more feasible as well? Well, uh, number one, I think at this point, it's very hard for Western companies to compete with China in infrastructure construction. So that's why they uh, utilize this smear campaign against China using all kinds of excuses, particularly political uh, value systems difference, to attack China and try to exclude China. For instance, uh, the developing countries need uh, cost-efficient infrastructure like communication system. And at this time, uh, United States and other countries insist that they should not use Huawei, ZTE, and other equipment because there's security flaws. So I think uh, it's very difficult for those countries to make the choice if they're not uh, being able to allow to choose cheaper, more cost-efficient Chinese infrastructure. However, these kind of infrastructure actually help developed countries uh, by developing their trade relations uh, with developing countries. So th it is very self-constructing, uh, uh, deconstructing uh, in terms of uh, applying this kind of PGII projects uh, without looking at potential of cooperation in many of those areas. The PGII is essentially a revamped Build Back Better World, as I mentioned, which was announced last year during the G7 summit. Um, Mr. Gupta, why is the West, it seems, the West is in a hurry to come up with their version of uh, infrastructure program for the developing countries. They have been sleeping for a whole decade after China brought up that idea of a Belt and Road Initiative. They, they say, we can't understand, we're not interested, we don't think this is going to work. And all of a sudden they are awake and they're anxious, they're trying to, you know, know, catch up or surpass, what's going on? Uh, what's going on is that they realize if you need to beat something, you need to have something on the table. They were continually bad-mouthing what China was doing, but if you don't have an alternative, uh, it's it's of no, no, no use. But what I would say is that this has been the case state of affairs for the last few years. We've had the, the they, they passed the uh, Build Act in Congress in 2018, the MCC Modernization Act in 2018. There's been energy on this front, but at the end of the day, there's nothing to really show. I mean, think, things, think of something like the Blue Dot Network. Fairly good idea. Anybody knows what's happening with the Blue Dot Network? Has no. anything been... Exactly, and that, that gets to the exact point that... But what's the problem? So... Why do such ideas not get materialized. We have the B3, B3W project, right? It's, it's per, kind of just dead. Um, so what's the likelihood of this project finally materialized, uh, if at all, Mr. Gupta? I, I don't, uh, if it materializes, it'll materialize in a very low key way and will materially not make much difference on the ground. But the real problem is they want to compete against China, but they don't have the will. They have some resources, but they don't have the will to commit to that. So they will talk a good game, but they can't walk their good game. And at the end of this, at the end of the day, people are not stupid. People figure this out. 
And that's why the expectations already are so low with regard to PGII. Let's also take a look at uh, some other um, very unique develop or very new developments rather uh, about what's going to happen in Madrid uh, concerning the NATO summit. Uh, we understand that the Turkey, Fr Finland and Sweden have signed a memorandum to back the Nordic countries joining NATO. And we also have uh, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida and ROK President Yusuk Yul also attending this summit. Chao Hai, uh, how do you read into the signs of potentially the kind of expansion that NATO is looking at. Should China brace for a storm? Well, I think the future uncertainty is increasing because at this point, it's very clear that NATO is changing its strategic concept from 10 or 12 years ago, Lisbon. Uh, and now they're adopting a new concept that aimed at not only uh, the challenge of Russia, but also China. So. That's why they're inviting uh, many members from uh, the Asia Pacific area trying to uh, join with NATO and try to coordinating uh, with NATO. And uh, those policies in the future will be aimed at China. And they named many challenges coming from the rise of China. So I think uh, the world will experience a more turbulence time and NATO's expansion globally will be a challenge for both China and many uh, other countries who want peace and development right. to be the main theme of the world. Right. Another thing, uh, Gupta, uh, try to be brief, the U.S. is leading many things, many concepts in the region. We have the Quad, we have the Alcos, we have the IPEF, we have the uh, PGII, and, and we also have the BP, uh, PBP, the partners in the Blue Pacific. Uh, so many new things. What's going on? What's going on in the minds of the United States? What's going on is it's a China minus strategy. Uh, we, can't, we don't want to have direct zero-sum competition with China, so we'll try to shape the environment around China. And part of shaping the environment around China is try to have this framework, the uh, co cooperation frameworks from which China is excluded. And frankly, China, apart from real hard security issues where they work through alliances, China sits at the heart of all these networks. And therefore, most of these will, frankly, come a cropper. They will fail. Um, I don't I don't know what the majority of countries and people need in this world right more military uh, blocks or greater opportunities for development railway roads economy trade think about it anyway we have to leave it there uh, many thanks to Saurabh Gupta senior Asia Pacific international relations policy specialist and Zhao Hai from the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences